Okay, here's what we're going to do. We have a friend who said she wants to be able to unpack the mast, pack the mast back possibly, but here's the diagram that comes in the Singer Silver Reed. And sometimes covers. when you get a second-hand machine, this is long gone. Right. I have several in here now where this sticker is not here. But you notice it tells you one, two, three, how to load it up. And it gives you a nice picture here to let you see. I'm going to lift this up and see if I can get it over here like that. There you go. See, there's your diagram that shows you each component. This is the head of your bug head. I know it's a mast. <laughs> It's but, really the antenna that, uh, the, the part Jack's calling a bug head, are the yarn carriers. Right, right. Well, and it just looks like a praying mantis to me. I see. But why. here we go. We come over here, and this is how it's done. This spring-loaded arm is always where your sinker plate's going to be. So we're going to take that out. That's another video for another day. Now, if you'll notice... There's a, there's a small spot here where the inside edge of this bug head goes right over that flat plate. So that's how it's mounted in. And that's what the diagram is showing you, that it does that. Now here's what we're going to do. See, it's folded up and things are in the wrong configuration. Now what I've noticed is these two ends will wrap themselves and they're supposed oh, to. Oh, they just love to. They're spring steel and they... Yeah, but they're supposed to when they're packed away. In fact, I do that. But now watch. See where it hinges right there. Now, notice there's a hole here. And not on that side. You're getting out of the frame and okay. I can't, can't follow you. Okay. Better. But now here we go. Hear that? Listen. That's that hole lining up with that dimple that tells you that the antenna is now in the right direction. So for packaging up, we break it loose. We can't see you. You're way out of okay. the picture again. We fold it around, and you see it lays right down in here like that. So now we're going to do the opposite again. Unfold. Unfold all the way up until it clicks into place. Now this part is ready. All right, little white clip right here. And I will tell you right now, this clip is missing off of a lot of machines. So sometimes they're just laying in here. That's right. But now we're going to come over here to this end. And you see, here's a clip that it's into right here. And it's also inserted into this hole. So this would be enough to hold it in place until you put your Sinker plate right there, and you latched it down, okay? The sinker plate latches just like so. Notice how this spring is going to help hold that into place. Okay, but we're unpacking it now. Right. Now it's out, and you'll notice that there is a curved end. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. The other end is perfectly straight. Now we're going to move over and mount it on the bed. You and I, camera friend and I, we are on the back of the machine where nobody would be working. Jack, the man in the frog shirt, is on the side that a knitter normally is working when they set up. Okay, now the curved part of this shaft is going to tilt away from the machine. And you'll see why when I download the guide... You see, it's on the back side where your yarn's going to be stored. It rotates out. Right. Now, this is one way to tell the difference between the Silver Reed Singer style and the Brother style. See those two little teeny places that are pinched, it looks like, on the side of little the shelf. Little ears sticking out. Yes. They go left to right on these machines. On the Brother machines, they go front to back. So they look very similar, but you're mast will only fit in rotated 90 degrees on the wrong kind of machine. That's right. And we need the top to slant backwards. Now we're going to mount the bug head. I'm going to crawl up here. We're looking at the top. Tell me when you can see this part. I can't see it all. How about that? 
Okay, let's come on down. Please. Yeah, you come down and then we'll go back up. <laughs> but you'll notice this is the area in which the shaft is going to insert into the... And it's, we're net. actually looking at what's the underside once it's in work. Right. Here it is in its working position. And there's the hole that the mount shaft is going to go through. But it's got to line up again with the two pinched sides of the shaft into those slots. Now I'm going to put it into position and we're going to let Catherine film it. All right, this is the head mounted on the shaft in the operating position with the wire loops up locked into their usable spot. And actually, you the knitter right. are going to be seeing this end of it poking towards you. This will be leaning back away from you, which is important because I'm bending them forward as they will be bent when the yarn is being fed through them. And this is where you can read, I'm going to try and turn it, see this, the V in the indicator? That tells us tension 2, tension 3. So okay, if it, I'm going to do it because your hand yeah. was blocking the numbers. But this is how we know the higher the number, the tighter the tension is. And the yarn will pass through it with more drag against it. Right. So generally, the bigger the yarn, the lower number you want to use. And as the yarn gets smaller, you need the tension to hug it more tightly to control it, and your numbers go up. But we know we're oriented correctly. When you're sitting at the machine and you're looking and you see the V that exposes the number position, so you know you've got it on correct. Now watch it go into the slot. And that's all it does. And it does rotate slightly from side to So now I am standing beside the machine. This is the side view you would have from one end. This is how it looks before you set up your yarns. Please overlook the messy shop. We're scanning down to the machine. It's inserted into the machine there and here are the first two yarn guides so up here would come one of your yarns following the path my finger is making up through the tensioning device then looped through the first of these wire loops then bend down the long flexible piece pop the yarn into the loop on the end of it and finally through the last of the guides and from there into the carriage jack is actually threading a machine up for you now up to the tensioning device now there's a little snap into place there you don't just lay it over it pops in between the discs forward to the first sturdy wire loop over to the inside and that rotates into position doing it one more time starting outside lifting over towards the inside of the wire and rotating it into position now i'm bringing down the loop from inside to outside pops it into place and now starting inside two rotations gets it around that little coil and we're ready to go into the carriage one more time for the last portion from over to the inside and up in loops outside wrap wrap and we're in